Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So as you can see, I am working on another body again. This is the ESP LTD. This is the M10. The M17 7 string is curing right now. So the epoxy has to go through a process of getting nice and hard to where I can start working with the top and get it to the next steps of finishing it. So I figured I might as well you know, keep myself busy and start working on another one. So you can see there's some some changes. The top has been stripped down to bare wood, and uh, other than the armrest area here, I really don't have to shave this or do anything with the armrest area. But I did take off about an eighth of an inch off the top of this body in order to compensate for the epoxy resin cloth, and then more epoxy resin on top of that, which would be the finishing epoxy resin for the finish for sanding and polishing. Reason being is because if the body is up too high and the neck is down low, well, you're not going to have any room for adjustment for your bridge. And in this case, it's a tuna manic with string through instead of a tailpiece. And that's going to cause issues with, you know, trying to set up the guitar and everything else. And as you can see here, I end up filling the uh, bridge pick, or neck pickup, sorry, with epoxy resin as well. And it's nice and flesh. Now, and this is not the same epoxy resin that I use for the bodies, okay, for finishing. This one is a liquid glass, which means it's a lot harder, it doesn't shrink, and this stuff here will chip and crack, all right? Now, if you, if you end up doing something with the liquid glass, um, like anything like you know, abusing it in any way, throwing it on the ground, you know, taking a hammer to it, something like that, it will crack, it will chip, it will split. The stuff that I use that on top of the body is more of a hard plastic. That way it's like, it, it's a better shell than what this liquid glass is. This liquid glass is good for deep molds and stuff, like if you're doing jewelry or casting a, a, a heart or, or diamond or like I used to do with the eggs, uh, this stuff works better because it's a thinner, uh, velocity than the other epoxy resin that I use for that's for countertops all the air bubbles come up a lot easier so when you're doing a deep pour and there's some air bubbles from mixing it they come up a lot easier and they pop and there's no bubbles inside the epoxy as you're looking through whatever you've made the stuff that I do with the tops on these that's a lot thicker it ends up making bubbles it does get uh, harder quicker because it heats up, this stuff here, the liquid glass, does not. So it takes a longer time for it to cure. This is nice and flush. And as you can see that there are some like pieces of wood inside of there, little pins you're seeing sticking up. It's because I did what they would do with concrete. All right, and If you just look at like a, a street or something that's being poured, they'll put rebar between the, uh, the next pour of concrete to kind of lock them together and to help keep them from changing as far as rising and lowering due to temperature change and shit like that. So I did the same thing with this. It also helps keep the two together locked in place. So if there's any expansion and contraction on this body, like moisture or whatever gets in there, it gets too dry, I'm not going to get any cracking going around the edges over here because these two are locked together. And this epoxy that I'm using, this liquid glass, has a better adhesion to it, if you want to say, because it's more liquid, it gets into more of the pores. So that works out pretty good as well. So that's nice and flush. I'm eliminating that pickup so it shows more of the artwork. So one of the things I have to do is check after sanding. I always check to see what I got on each side of the neck. So if I measure, uh, I want eighths. So if I measure this side of the neck, and I'm seeing where I'm at right now, and I'm measuring this side of the neck, I'm looking at uh, two eighths. perfectly two eighths on each side. So that's telling me that this neck is not going to look like it's sitting in the pocket crooked when the guitar is finished. And I mean finished, I mean already polished and everything else. And you look down the neck, you're not going to see the neck sitting on an angle, but the body is straight, you know, or the neck is straight and the body looks like it's on. You're not going to see that. So how do I stop the epoxy resin, especially something that is uh, a very thin kind of like water uh, consistency 
from getting into or making a mess all over the rest of the body of the guitar. Well, I have this foam rubber that I've been using, and I got these in chunks. I cut a little bit off, kind of like what you see here, like a corner, I'll chop off of it, and I'll stuff it inside the hole and pack it in there. I cut it bigger than what the diameter of the hole is. It stops the epoxy resin from like getting into the neck pocket or uh, going down into the control cavity or you don't want. This one here has two um, ports, I guess you want to call them. It's going one from going from the neck pickup and the other one going from the bridge pickup. So I had to block off the one going from the neck. I blocked it off on both sides just in case maybe a little bit would seep through. If you could tell because you'll start seeing bubbles in that area where you blocked it off. In that case, you know, a little bit has seeped going into there. But I'll have the other piece of foam inside there to stop it from getting the rest of the way. Which in this case, it worked out pretty good. So what I have to do with this is I got to fill this in because right now this area is very, very thin as you can kind of see the discoloration in the wood. So that made it very thin. These guys here still have some meat to it. But this one here, they end up countersinking for the three-way switch. So they end up taking out more wood over here than what there is on this side. So what I'm going to have to do with that is I'll have to mask off keeping it level with this side and mask it off over here because I want to fill that in. And the reason being is I'm going to eliminate basically all the controls that are on here. When I put the dark colored or black cloth on top of this, you're not even going to see what the controls are. And it also makes it difficult for putting in, um, looking for the uh, holes for the bridge, it makes it a little bit difficult. The pickup cavity is a little bit easier because when I end up taking the foam and I put it inside of here, I'll cut it to where it just keeps the cloth up, but it'll still kind of indent itself a little bit. It keeps it from sagging into there all the way. And that will keep it from stretching the cloth going into the cavity as well. And I also do that with the neck pocket. The holes over here, what I end up doing with those is again with the same foam. If I'm working on the top, then the top will get the foam. If I'm working on the bottom and the top is complete, I'll go in from the back and drill out all the holes and then fill these holes to complete the back of the body with the epoxy resins. In this case here, I'm not gonna get, I'm not going to do the back of the body with the epoxy resin because the back of the body of this thing is in pretty damn nice shape. I can uh, wet sand it with 800 grit or uh, maybe 1500 grit and shoot it with some clear and actually clear coat the back of this without having any problems. This back is in like mint, mint, yeah, mint condition. So eliminating these controls, I'll have the freedom to put whatever I want here. And because this is kind of a big area, uh, yeah, it goes all the way down to here to about right up to here and is about this wide to the, about the edge of where this three-way switch was. So there's quite a bit here. And I'm going to end up probably putting three controls in here because I want the volume, a tone, uh, and then I want the um, that circuit that I picked up that kind of adds uh, pedal effects to the guitar plus a battery. And this three-way switch here will be turned into what you would see on a Les Paul body. So this is pretty much ready to go. I still have to fill these holes up over here with that rubber. And then I have to lay out the material for the uh, uh, that's the top, the artwork that's going on here. Cut that out to size. But in the meanwhile, this is what the body is looking like for the seven string. Now, <coughs> excuse me. This is not the finished clear coat on it, because you can see that there's a gloss on there. What I ended up doing is putting another coat of epoxy on it today and letting that cure really good, nice and hard. Now, I'm going to cut the cloth material off over here, and that'll be exposing the wood, and I'll be getting rid of this piece of cloth over here. I not don't care about it. That's why I left this black so I know exactly where my line is. It's a nice straight line to where I can cut the material down on and hopefully just peel this right off. It should peel right off. With this being white, as far as the material goes, it's see-through once it gets wet. Well, you guys ought to know that with wet t-shirts, you know. So I can see where the pickup controls, uh, pickup cavities are. I can see where the bridge mount is, where the seven strings are. Uh, also where the controls are. This one, I'm gonna keep the original control configuration with the sliding switch. Uh, 
but if there's enough room in here, I'm going to add again the circuit for adding like um, uh, pedals, effects, whatever you want to call them, to the guitar itself. And again, I'm going to have to put a battery in box inside this one too. I ordered a shitload of battery boxes and battery clips for just doing this. So I gotta let this cure up, and once this gets, because right now it's still a little bit flexible, but once this cures up nice and hard, I could take my Dremel with a routing attachment to it, which means it's a smaller bit and a smaller uh, roller, and I can go around the edges of this really close up, and it's also adjustable in and out, so I can adjust it to get cl really close without damaging or touching the body, or I can leave it out a little bit so I have some sanding room to make it flush with the body. Considering this one here is going to get painted. Now, picture this, okay, what, the way you're seeing it right here is not the finished product. And I don't know how bad or how good it actually looks with what the type of cloth I put on here, but I'm also going to do the headstock the same way. I'm going to incorporate the bullet shells into this in just random different areas, kind of keeping the theme of like a Western type thing. I'm also going to do is I have either black or I have the black diamond, which is uh, like a metallic. I'm going to mist the edges of this with the black kind of giving it like a, I guess a birth of burst effect I'm also gonna do the headstock the same way so just having it go to the edges the way it looks now it is not the finished product so you're gonna have to picture this with the black going around the edges and then the back is gonna be black as well headstock is gonna match the body so it'll be done the same way This one here is not going to get the same effect because it's going to be black on the top anyways. Everything is going to be black uh, besides the image that will be centered. But I'm also going to incorporate the images into the neck and into the head, into the headstock. So I've already printed out uh, kind of like what I did with the Live After Death body. I'm going to incorporate a lot of the imaging that is on the artwork that's going on the body bits and pieces of it into the neck and then there's going to be another kind of like a copy of this or something that is uh same theme but a different picture and that will be going on the neck as well so i gotta get all this shit cleaned up over here and start doing some masking so i'm gonna get into that right now